the rise of psychology around 150 years ago opened up a new dimension to reality that we had previously not fully comprehended. And over the 20th century and the 21st century, we've seen the weaponization of psychology. And one of the ways that it has been weaponized is in the form of what I'm going to call cognito hazards. There are two main types of cognito hazards we'll cover in this video, and they are superego and id cognito hazards. And they operate in slightly different manners, but, but ultimately they both serve as, I would say, major threats to us as individuals and potentially to us as an entire society. As human beings, our time is our most valuable asset. We are here for a deceptively short time, which makes the way we use time of the most vital importance. The subconscious and conscious parts of ourselves direct how we act in reality, so ensuring our minds are properly aligned to the truth of reality is important to ensure we are acting in the best possible manner. For example, if I were to design a building while not aligning to the natural laws of force and gravity, the building would likely collapse, meaning we not only waste material, but our time and potentially human lives. Two models that are important to our understanding of how the mind operates are the triune model of the brain and Freud's structural model of the psyche. The triune model of the mind shows that our brain operates with three basic structures, the neocortex, the limbic system, and the reptilian brain. Although it is disputed whether or not this model accurately maps onto our mind's neurological structure, it is a useful model for understanding how the brain operates. This model essentially claims that the neocortex controls speech, logic, and higher order thinking. The limbic system governs emotion, the reptilian brain governs instinctual and survival drives. This model claims that the lower order models of thinking, relying on emotion and instinct, were likely the first systems that were optimized in our brain during the course of evolution. The neocortex evolved later and evolved to be a major part of the human brain later in our evolution. Thus, we have ancient, deep mental circuits that hide within our minds. Freud's model of the psyche posits that there are three elements of the human mind, the id, the ego, and the superego. The id is similar to the reptilian brain in that it governs instinct and primal urges. The superego is what tethers us to our culture and the higher ideals of our society. Our ego is what connects us to reality. According to the model, the ego is primarily conscious, while the superego is mostly unconscious, and the id is totally unconscious. It is dangerous to assume that our conscious and unconscious minds are aligned to reality by default, or that we can inherently trust them. This is due to the prevalence of what I will call cognito hazards. A cognito hazard is any information that, when observed, causes harm to the observer. Cognito hazards can be deliberately used as weapons, or they can be unwittingly released or created. Given the rapid explosion of the internet, humanity will need to contend with the reality and the danger of the cognito hazard threat. One theoretical kind of cognito hazard is a mental illness initiator. This would be any kind of information that, when viewed, would cause the viewer to become mentally ill in some manner. An example of a weaponized info hazard in this vein could be a video that, upon viewing, would cause PTSD in a victim. Info hazards like this uh, do not exist to the best of my knowledge, but similar ones potentially could. There are numerous examples of severe mass psychogenic epidemics throughout history, so weaponizing this phenomenon could simply be a matter of time and matter of replicating the conditions of the previous outbreaks of these psychogenic illnesses. There are two specific types of cognito hazards that seem to actually be real as opposed to the fabled mental illness initiator. These are caused by hijacking the conscious mind of the victim and manipulating their id or superego. The first and most blatant kind of info hazard is what I will call an id hijacker. 
an id hijacker wrestles the control of the mind away from the ego and plunges the brain into id control. This means that the victim is now operating with the id or the reptile brain at the helm. This means that the victim has severely impaired higher order brain function and is thus operating autonomously via lower brain functions. There are instances where the brain naturally does this. An example would be when a person is faced with extreme danger, such as war, and they are put into a situation which activates their unconscious fight or flight response. When a person is exposed to extreme chaos, they can essentially go on autopilot, where they act on instinct in order to maximize their likelihood of survival. Another example could be a person simply going into autopilot because they've done the same task over and over and over again, and it's essentially easier for their brain to go on autopilot than to think through everything consciously. In modern times, id hijackers have become incredibly common. One example of a recent real-world use of an id hijacker in warfare comes from the Israel-Palestine conflict. In March of 2002, Israel took over three major Palestinian television stations as a part of Operation Defensive Shield. Allegedly, Israeli soldiers began broadcasting sexually explicit videos over public airwaves into Palestine for the purposes of psychological warfare. The efficacy of this action could be debated, but nevertheless, if this kind of content was used by a professional military, then it follows that there is a tactical reason for this action. I would argue that men are especially susceptible to id hijackers. Male sexuality is primarily visual, and it is extremely easy for sexual visual content to grab the attention of most men. Content of this nature grabs one's conscious focus from a state of higher conscious thought and drags it down into the sexual reptilian brain id. For most untrained men, this is unavoidable. Women's brains are wired somewhat differently than men with regards to sex, on average so these info hazards have less of an impact on them. Another example of an id hijacker is the slot machine algorithm that many social media companies utilize today. Social media companies, starting with TikTok, have universally implemented a scrolling short video content delivery system. This algorithm is derived from principles found in slot machines, where each crank could lead to the jackpot. On social media, the user is essentially kept in a trance, mindlessly scrolling on a content treadmill in the hope of stumbling upon the content jackpot. Modern social media algorithms are effectively crafted to grab a person's conscious attention and keep them in an unconscious, reactive id state, relying on small emotional bursts of dopamine from the emotional center or the limbic system of the brain. In essence, social media companies utilize a recurring info hazard which uses human psychology to keep you in their platform as long as humanly possible. This is a cognito hazard because it requires the algorithm to put your brain into a lower state of consciousness in order for it to work. And every element of the graphical user interface and the social media experience is painstakingly optimized to ensure that it keeps you in this unconscious state. Ultimately, the most pressing threat we face today from id hijackers is the theft of higher order conscious processing, or time theft. Sexual content or advertisements can easily attract the attention of most men, leading to easy money through advertising. Sexual id hijackers also ensnare many men into vicious cycles of returning to the same reptilian brain content or even spending real-world money on peddlers of this content, as seen in the OnlyFans phenomenon. The slot machine social media algorithms steal billions of people's time through deceptive psychology, which has likely led to an extreme amount of wasted time globally. With that said, the slot machine algorithm is not entirely bad, as it fills many other demands that people need, such as relaxation or education. Sexual cognito hazards are egregious due to the fact that there's nothing good that really comes from them, and 
that they can be extremely profitable due to exploiting the weakness and vulnerabilities of human psychology. The second form of Freudian cognito hazards is the superego hijacker. This info hazard grabs one's conscious control and manipulates it via the mechanisms of the superego. The superego governs one's relations to the surrounding culture and social context. Historically, it appears that there is a lot of evidence that suggests that women seem to be more susceptible to this mental contagion. There are many instances throughout history of mostly female factory workers all exhibiting the same psychosomatic symptoms all at once. Another, I guess, specific example would be in 2023 at St. Teresa's Girls High School in Musoli, Kenya where over 100 girls were hospitalized due to uncontrollable arm and leg movements, sometimes accompanied by headaches and vertigo. There are a countless number of similar events stretching back hundreds of years that can also be found with a simple internet search. And I'd suggest uh, going down this rabbit hole of psychogenic epidemics. Other examples of psychogenic epidemics were the epidemics of anorexia, bulimia, and self-harm that was especially seen in the early 2000s and the early 2010s. This trend was mainly found among young women and it was likely a result of a massive sociological contagion partially spread via the internet. Women are likely more vulnerable due to the slightly different psychology of the sexes. Men tend to be more focused on objects and things, while women care more about people and social networks. This value of networks and social connections likely makes women more susceptible to superego hijackers, as these contagions make it appear that anomalous behaviors are being promoted by the wider society and the wider social networks, and thus it makes people decide to join in on these behaviors to remain part of the in-group rather than being seen as some, you know, weird social outsider. Many ideologies or cults could also be considered to use superego hijackers as well. The baseline narrative of reality is that results are only achieved in the long term. Suffering in life is inevitable, and history progresses dialectically, and we stand on the shoulders of giants, which means that we must value the lessons of the past. Ultimately, the null worldview is that reality is complex and multidimensional. One type of superego hijacker could be predatory idealism. Predatory idealism posits a counter idea to the null worldview, which promises that there is actually short term salvation from the realities of the world. This ideology explains that suffering in reality can be completely eliminated and that essentially the demiurge or the demon class is the cause of all the world's suffering. Predatory idealism paints a worldview with simple answers for extremely complex problems. Ultimately, predatory idealism sees the world through an extremely simplified and often single-dimensional lens instead of its multidimensional reality. These belief systems derive their ethos from the assertion that their ideology is more advanced than modern systems, with scientific or spiritual reasonings being the core cause. The widespread and rapid adoption and failure of communism globally can be seen as one example of a superego hijacker, and the cult of personality around Hitler can be seen as another. Cults that have emerged and died throughout history are another example. Predatory idealism channels the desperate desire for people's human suffering to cease into the promise of a better life through an easily understandable, emotionally gratifying, and ultimately exciting system. Another example of a pretty predatory superego hijacker can be found in the form of erotic literature. Visual sexual content is primarily viewed by men while written content is primarily viewed by women. This is likely due to the differences between male and females with relation to sex. Men have little to no risk in sex. Men cannot become pregnant, so sex is a low-risk activity compared to the risk that women have to undertake. Women, on the other hand, 
harbor an enormous risk and cost in the sexual arena. Thus, women must be very selective to ensure that they are choosing the best mate to have children with, or they will be putting themselves into a bad position with their pregnancy, and they will be putting up a huge amount of risk for little to no reward. So the calculation has to be that, you know, women have to put in effort to ensure that they're selecting someone who's, you know, high risk but also high reward. In this way, sexual selection in men is more or less unidimensional, and it asks the question, is the woman physically attractive? For women, mate selection is more multidimensional. Women evaluate men on a number of different dimensions, ensuring that they find the best partner. Erotic literature hijacks the higher dimensional manner in which women select their mate by providing an idealistic and predatory narrative. The typical erotic narrative is that a high-value, wild man who could have any woman he wants is essentially tamed by an ordinary woman. This man essentially chooses this ordinary woman over the harem of potential women he could have, and they live happily ever after. The issue is that this wishful narrative is often unaligned to reality, and women who believe in this story are likely setting themselves up to be used by predatory and manipulative men, especially through modern hookup culture. This type of literature constitutes a superego hijacker because it puts the person reading it into the unconscious and captivating world of the superego with compelling narratives and symbols which ultimately fulfill a carnal and emotional desire. As a final example, in Vietnam, the strategies employed in Operation Wandering Soul by the US military could be an example of an id hijacker and a superego hijacker used in combat. In this operation, the military utilized extremely loud speakers to broadcast Vietnamese funeral processions to give the impression that there were ghosts wandering the battlefield, thereby terrifying the Viet Cong in many ways. The intent of this fear-inducing psyop would have been to take a rational soldier and drag him down to the scared, instinctual level of fear of the unknown and fear of death. This psyop could also be considered a superego hijacker as well, due to the cultural practices and beliefs of the Vietnamese. In Vietnamese culture, there's a strong belief in the importance of proper burial rites to ensure that the deceased spirits can move on peacefully. The failure to perform these rites on people who had died in the battlefield was believed to condemn the soul to wander the earth in anguish. In this way, Operation Wandering Soul is a legendary example of the weaponization of both types of cognito hazards in a combat setting. In conclusion, cognito hazards are essentially any information that can cause a person to become unaligned with reality by manipulating their unconscious minds to hijack control over their will. With the rise of the internet, info hazards can be spread with extreme efficiency, which can lead to outbreaks of mass psychogenic illness, such as the widespread outbreak of Tourette's syndrome ticks spread via TikTok between 2021 and 2023. I would highly advise you look into this because it's, this is crazy that this stuff is happening. Human beings should harness their conscious minds to enact their conscious will, and that will should reflect basic reality. We are vulnerable to become unaligned to reality via superego hijackers, and we are vulnerable for our minds to be dragged down into an unconscious trance via id hijackers. The widespread dissemination of both forms of cognito hazards has already occurred, and it has already led to an incredible amount of damage to society and individuals as a whole. As humanity determines the best way to approach this newly understood threat, it is imperative that each individual guards his or her mind against common mental traps that seek to ensnare them. It is vital that we exercise as much conscious autonomy as we can over ourselves, and that we identify info hazards when they emerge, ignoring them or dealing with them appropriately. So we covered essentially some basic, you know, a basic overview of what cognito hazards are out there. But 
the reality is there's there's way way more examples than I covered in this video and and this is a, a subject that really needs to be rigorously studied academically and we need to understand it we need to as humanity we need to understand it and and develop like solid safeguards against it as we go forward into the future because the fact is that psychogenic illnesses contagions these things do exist and human beings are susceptible to them and we need to find the tools we need to make sure that we have the tools to counter them and and especially given the fact that the internet makes it so that you know some people can interact with everybody which leads to potentially a cascading effect where psychogenic contagions can basically multiply extremely rapidly in a historically unprecedented manner um, we need to ensure that we are you know we have the tools to counter them because if we don't well we don't really know what the worst thing that could happen here is so well this should be on our radar and this is an important area for us to study but hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one peace